Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium. Welcome. Uh, tonight I'm just doing a video on one of my beautiful North American species that just molted. And so she's looking especially lovely today. So let's take a look at her and I'll tell you a little bit about her. Alrighty, so here she is. She has just molted within the last week. Of course, if your animal's freshly molted, you want to make sure not to disturb them because they are especially vulnerable during that time in the first few days when their exoskeleton is hardening to its full potential. If you've ever seen a tarantula molt, you know they're kind of like soft and squishy when they first emerge. Here is her molt, obviously. I already know this is a female. This is a female that's already been bred. If it wasn't, I feel like the the way I'm most confident sexing tarantulas, pre rather than a ventral inspection, I like to uh, take a look at the epigastric fold of the molt. Here is where the epigastric fold is. And so basically you just look in this area here, which is kind of far away from me. So I hope that you're seeing what I'm seeing. I'm actually not seeing it because it's under the camera lens. The little white dots here are the book lungs, so that's pretty neat. Of course, you can see these look like the sleeves to the legs and the fangs. And so when it's before it's molted, this is the top of the thorax. Then this is the abdomen, which it's now kind of shriveled up. So it's sort of uh, splits and bursts open. This area sort of looks like a half moon or a top lip. And that is the epigastric fold. I really like to examine a molt to most efficiently determine the sex of my older tarantulas. It's really hard in a tiny sling molt because all those little pieces are so tiny. You can you can put them under a microscope and take a look but I like this method because you don't have to handle your tarantula you don't have to stress them out and I feel like you can manipulate it very well and make a pretty good determination if you know what you're looking for if you look up the anatomy online if you don't have a male versus a female molt to to look at you can I feel like it's pretty definitive so here is this beautiful girl right here I feel like Afinopelma chalcotes is definitely in like in the maybe top three most beautiful Afinopelma genus next to Moderatum and Cochise. Um, I don't know which would I which I would say I like best out of those two. They're both really pretty. This is a really great species because of their docile nature and they're really hardy and beautiful. So I thought that she looked especially pretty because she had just molted and you can definitely see all of her color her nice full abdomen has a fresh coat of urticating hairs on it and one thing that's nice about North American species is that among new worlds they're not as quick to kick hairs and so she'll stay nice and beautiful for quite some time now if this animal's really stressed out or being harassed or um, if it's in a really high traffic area, she might be kicking more. But she's just out here in my zoo and she gets left alone for the most part other than if she needs to do a quick educational video. Before your animal is molting, you wanna make sure that they don't have food, that they have plenty of moisture, and that they have a nice, quiet, warm place to molt. Not too warm, but just maybe a degree or two warmer than normal. And you can see she made it through her molt very well. I've already given her a few roaches and a few crickets and I'm gonna water her down and just kind of leave her alone to get in some snacks. Comment below what your favorite species of Afinopelma is and I'll see you guys soon. Obscurity, don't let me ever be this alone. I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. Shouldn't be. 